everyone, it's Dr. Romani, and uh, this series is designed to sort of define and make sense of all the many, many words people use out there when they're talking about narcissism and narcissistic relationships. It's sort of a world with its own vocabulary, and this series is sort of meant to be a bit of a glossary or dictionary to help you make sense of it, sort of give you examples, talk about how these things happen in a variety of settings, how they affect you, how to cope, and why it even happens. Today's video or the term we're going to be taking on is scapegoating. And before we get to that topic, please hit the bell, subscribe to this channel, and then you will also be informed as new videos get released in this series and the two videos we put out every week on a whole range of topics related to narcissism. So let's talk about scapegoating. Here's the thing. Every bully needs a victim and every narcissist, sadly, needs a punching bag. And anyone who has ever had a narcissistic parent knows about scapegoating. Because if it didn't happen to you, it likely happened to a sibling or the child in your family system. The scapegoat gets the worst of the narcissist. They take the hardest psychological blows. And since the narcissist needs to take his or her insecurity out on someone, sadly, wherever there's a narcissist, not too far away, there's a scapegoat. Scapegoating is a common dynamic in narcissistic relationships. It typically involves a person zeroing in on one person and blaming them for the things that are happening to them and giving them undesirable things to do. They may insult them, they may belittle them, they may devalue them and treat them differently and always more poorly than they do other people. The scapegoat becomes sort of a repository or a bucket that receives the narcissist's rage, anger, and misery. The scapegoat is typically someone who antagonizes the narcissist in a very specific way. And there are multiple pathways through which scapegoating happens. The narcissist perceives the scapegoat as someone weak or undesirable. They perceive the scapegoat as a threat or they perceive the scapegoat as vulnerable, perceiving the scapegoat as a reminder of the worst parts of themselves. So let's break these down. The simplest version of scapegoating is that the narcissist scapegoats the person that they perceive as somehow weak or undesirable. This is in many ways a sort of classical bullying presentation. In a family, the weak or the undesirably judged scapegoat may be the child or the sibling who is the most sensitive, who may be physically small, or for some reason physically or psychologically or intellectually considered less desirable for some reason by the narcissistic parent. For example, it may be the child that least resembles the parent or has an appearance that doesn't conform to the parent's sense of attractiveness or doesn't study the things they want them to study in school. And in an intimate relationship, this type of scapegoating may happen if a partner is deemed to be empathic or kind and over time may be devalued on the basis of physical appearance, for example, just normal aging. In a workplace, it may be an employee who is just kinder than the others and who may not conform to the workplace narcissist schema for how a person should look or be. But in this model, the scapegoat is considered less than. And in some ways, that likely serves as some sort of twisted rationalization for the narcissist. It is also quite possible that the always insecure narcissist preys upon whomever they perceive is weaker out of fear because the narcissist is afraid of their own weakness. And in that way, it becomes an interesting form of projection. A second form of scapegoating also derives from the classical form of bullying. In this case, scapegoating someone that the narcissist perceives as a threat. In this case, the narcissist goes after the person who may be better than the narcissist, someone who's smarter, more attractive, more successful, stronger, younger, you get it, you know? So the insecure narcissist 
will then attack, insult, and differentially abuse that person. But the narcissist may not even recognize that they think that person's better. Now this is classical in narcissistic family dynamics when one member of the family is outshining, for example, the narcissistic parent. And the threatened parent then belittles and minimizes that child. In a relationship, this dynamic may also arise if the non-narcissistic partner starts having greater career success, for example, or makes more money. In a workplace, this may happen when it becomes clear that there is a person who is more quick-witted than the resident workplace narcissist or narcissistic leader. Narcissists cannot just make room or welcome the idea that we all have our strengths. They are threatened by anyone who is good at what they do or who may be better than them. They need to scapegoat and remove or silence the person or the persons who are a threat. Scapegoating also happens when the narcissist perceives someone as being vulnerable or too willing to share emotions, which they see as weakness. This is similar to narcissists scapegoating those whom they perceive as weak, but this is just a little bit different. A healthy person who is self-aware and open with their emotions may stumble onto a narcissist in his or her life. And because narcissists are so afraid of emotion and they're so afraid of true empathy, in some ways, they may even perceive this emotionally open and vulnerable person as a threat. Scapegoating may be manifested as sort of shaming the vulnerable person for sharing their emotions or inappropriately sharing about the vulnerable person's emotions with other people. And that might happen in a family, in a workplace, or in a relationship. Ironically, the vulnerable person in this story, the scapegoat here, is actually the strong one. But it feels very devastating to be scapegoated simply because you're emotionally open. But that's just too much of a threat to the narcissist. But overall, the most compelling dynamic that has the deepest psychological roots is that the narcissist perceives something in the other person that evokes a strong emotion in the narcissist. And it's something that the narcissist is uncomfortable with in him or herself. And this can either be very linear, a narcissistic parent, for example, scapegoating a child who is not good at sports, or it can be paradoxical, a narcissist scapegoating someone who is able to succeed in something they cannot do well. So for example, this would be an example would be like the narcissist, the narcissist scapegoating the really warm and loving spouse that everyone loves being with because the narcissist knows at some primitive level that people don't look forward to seeing him or her, but they sure as heck do love seeing the wife. The scapegoating becomes a primitive form of self-harm. It's as though the narcissist is punishing the other person out of an inner rage about what the narcissist, him or herself, is lacking. I know that feels like a whole lot of psychobabble. But given how paradoxical and venomous that scapegoating can seem, you recognize that it comes from a deep, dark place within the narcissist that doesn't really conform to any rational reason. Not, honestly, that there could ever be a rational reason for being chronically unkind to another person. Scapegoating does tremendous harm to the person that's impacted by it. If you were scapegoated as a child by a parent or other family members, it can be catastrophic. It can erode your sense of trust and safety and foster a lifelong sense of anxiety. Children who are scapegoated feel ostracized and excluded, a dynamic that often haunts them well into adulthood, and they often always feel like they're not good enough. But I will tell you this, one thing that can often save the scapegoat is that they're often more willing to fly away and get away from the toxic family system as adults, just to get far away from that space. And being scapegoated, obviously, in a workplace can also be traumatic and very unsettling and result in all the negative long-term effects of working in a hostile and harassing workplace. 
Now, certain work cultures that are about oppression and being the best and sort of a bro culture can also foster a scapegoating culture where supporting a leader who is abusing another person can be enabled by silently allowing the scapegoating to happen. Sadly, in narcissistic systems, people are often grateful to not be the scapegoated one. So they may simply keep their heads down lest they become the next victim of the narcissist scapegoating wrath. And sadly, that can keep these systems in place. So why do narcissists scapegoat? Yeah, for the same reasons to why bullies bully, insecurity, having to put on a false show of strength by lashing out at the person who represents a threat or who represents an easy target. The core insecurity of the narcissist means that acting out in that manner may communicate to the world that the narcissist is actually strong when inside they are weak and they are insecure. It's also linked to the dynamic of projection whereby the narcissist projects their unresolved conflicts and internal anxieties onto those around them, especially the targets that trigger the narcissist's insecurities. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you are observing a child being scapegoated, please step in and protect that child in any way you can. Even if you can't fully address their family dynamic, at least let the child know that what he or she is experiencing or hearing about him or herself is a factor in the other person and not a failing in the child. Many scapegoated children needed to hear that as children from just one other adult in their world. Many people who have been scapegoated sometimes even just go with it and feel that it is the only way that they can even be noticed in a family or other system. It's like they're going to just keep playing to that scapegoated role to be noticed. Again, we must advocate for those who experience this kind of abuse. The narcissist will not stop doing it. So we need to protect those it is happening to, whether it's a child, in a workplace, or in your family. And if you are an adult and can escape the scapegoating situation, then do your best to get out. Or at a minimum, set boundaries, go gray rock, or just somehow psychologically distance. The scapegoating loses its power when you don't engage with it. And if other people are quietly standing by and letting it happen, you may want to start disengaging from them as well. They, in fact, may not be narcissistic but they showed that they were willing to be silent in the face of you or frankly someone else being oppressed and scapegoated and I don't think that's okay. Scapegoating is a classical dynamic in narcissistic families. People who are scapegoated are at risk for choosing partners who treat them dismissively as well when they are adults. And the scapegoating in a family doesn't just stop because you are no longer a child. Scapegoated kids often turn into scapegoated adults with the same sort of patterns of family mobbing and other abuse plaguing you over time. You must remain of this dynamic. You must remain aware of this dynamic in your in your family or your workplace and recognize that you must also be your own advocate and distance yourself from whatever tribe it is that enables the narcissist to maintain this pattern. Now being a scapegoat does not define you, or being scapegoated does not define you. You always have the choice and the right to step away from the scapegoating situation if you can do so safely and recognize that you are so much more than that. Trust me, and sadly, they will move on to their next scapegoat in quick order. And I'm sure you're thinking, oh my goodness, I so wish I could protect that person from happening. Honestly, the most important advocacy you can do is the advocacy you do for yourself. In so doing, you may be able to protect others, maybe not from this narcissist, but from other scapegoated situations. And if all of us can engage in that kind of bystander behavior, intervene when we sense this kind of scapegoating happening around us, we do run the chance of at least making a dent in this incredibly toxic and damaged dynamic. I do hope 
that this video clarified your understanding of scapegoating. And I know some of you may have experienced this, not just as kids, but also adults. Any of you who want to share your stories, please drop those in the comments. Thank you again for tuning into this series. I do hope it's been helpful. Please do also subscribe to this channel because you'll get notifications about all kinds of content, not just this series, but other regular videos we put out, YouTube Lives, and other special series. Thanks again.